If we look at part seven, the reporting and publication segment, and that's one segment I'm familiar with as a marine information specialist, um, we look at publishing data, the definition, to make the data public, to release, post, or share some unit of data, to link a publication with a data set, to peer review some unit of data, to curate, preserve, and steward data. These are all possible definitions of publishing data. To build coherent collections, sustain scientific value, make discoverable and accessible. Again, I'm quoting Borgman because I had the um, the pleasure of meeting her at the Federal Library of Congress a few years ago, and she gave an excellent talk on research data along with uh, Saeed Chaudhuri from, um, I think he was in DC at the time. Uh, why data are not publications? Uh, potential potholes for science and technology publishers. Research data have become scholarly objects in their own right to be released, shared, and reused. Data publishing has become a popular metaphor for dissemination activities. While metaphors can provide useful analogies, they can also be misleading. This one is particularly problematic because it equates research data with publications such as journal articles. Journal, journal articles are a genre that evolved over a period of several centuries as a way to make scholarly arguments, whereas data are the evidence that support those arguments. Efforts to transfer publication practices such as bibliographic citation and altimetrics to data are based on risky assumptions about data publication that obscure the substantial differences in incentives and infrastructure. Publications are independent units with auth where authorship is negotiated. Data can be compound objects where ownership is not clear. Attribution can be problematic for data. Um, the long-term responsibility in, with investigators, expertise for interpretation, data collectors, and analysts. Here's a definition of publications and data. Publications to data. Publications are arguments made by authors, and data are the evidence used to support the arguments. Stated again. Here's a traditional publication life cycle. You can see where the research community and the authors are submitting, data, submitting science articles to a journal. The journal is publishing putting these on the internet. The library perhaps is purchasing access to that journal, if they must, if it isn't open, and making it available. Here's the scientific life cycle, including data collection. If you follow it clockwise, you see the experimental design and device, the deployment plan, the field notes, the lab notes, the technical report, perhaps, data capture, cleaning, and analysis, the raw data set, moving from process data to analysis and results, and going up to the upper left, becoming a publication, being incorporate, incorporated into a publication, um, a 
manuscript, a preprint, additional material, publisher's metadata, and a postprint. Now, if you want to see a wonderful example of the new model of scholarly communication, please go to the University of Central Florida website. I hope you don't have any trouble getting to it. We're all getting to it at once here in the room. I think the connection's pretty robust. And you should be looking at a page like this. Someone has put a lot of thought into putting this together. This is the research life cycle as it exists at the University of Central Florida. And if you see in the, the middle the question, what do you need help with? Um, planning, project, publication, digital scholarship. And the various elements under each. Planning, literature reviews, collaboration tools, citation management tools, ethics and compliance, data management, and I can't read the bottom one. Can anyone read that to me? Uh, Sue? I'm sorry. Um, data sharing, grant planning. Which, um, right here? Data management, it's grant, grant planning. Grant planning. Thank you. And then project, data set metadata, analysis support, research data, ethics and compliance, grant management. These are, these are all um, areas that they offer help with at, at the University of Central Florida. Um, publication, writing workshops, deciding where to publish, author rights, and then finally, digital scholarship, metadata services, open access hosting, long-term preservation, discovery support, data curation, and Sue again, far right bottom, data sharing. Especially the, the part about grant, grant management. Yes, we're all concerned with grant management now with the grantors' uh, mandates to uh, make our data available after a project, after a research project. Um, so you see the services, learn more, um, open access information. It's, it's, in my opinion, a pretty good site. Um, if you click on has anyone found this um, diagram? It's available from that page. It's the research life cycle at the University of Central Florida. And it's an interactive website. It's really wonderful when you click on it. It'll, it'll start to lead you um, around uh, the uh, life cycle. And, um, I don't know who's responsible, I don't see anyone's name individually, but again, a lot of thought has gone into this. Um, you see the planning cycle in the center here. Um, research planning, grant planning right there within it. Uh, grant search, project descriptions, it's a little blurry on this screen, but um, I think on your own you can see it better. Uh, experimental project, moving to the right. Um, again, grant management, digital output, conclusions, the project cycle. Um, then moving down the publication cycle, draft work, peer review, publication and presentation. Moving to the left, preservation, Again, the grant conclusion, 
And what do you do at the end of a grant? Yes, you're required to publish. And often you have a certain time period. It can be a year. There may be an embargo period. Why do we have embargo periods? Sue? They can, they can gain some money from their publication, from the publisher's viewpoint. Any other ideas on an um, embargo period? He wants to work with his data. Well, if someone else wants to validate his work. And maybe a peer wants to validate his work. Okay. And I think some people have mentioned that sometimes scientists want an indefinite embargo period. They don't want to give up their data. Um, and moving on, the global scholarly community, once that grant is finished and access dissemination is given via the internet most likely, the global scholarly community will have access to the scientific output from that grant and um, there will be impact measures. Um, that reflect on the scientist and perhaps on the data. Maybe not exactly on the scientist, but it, they may cite the data. Um, and then we're back to the planning cycle again. All right, so we're going to have a, a short exercise, number one. What does the publication cycle look like now in your organization? Consider data in this question. Take a few minutes to write down where you are in your laboratories or universities. Um, how does the publication cycle look there? Are you including data? I'll give you about three minutes or four. Are there any groups that are studying in your organization data management plans, um, grant results access? Are, is your organization um, creating an institutional repository? Is that one way that access will be given? Does your country have a mandate to make research publicly available? These are some things that um, Greg talked about yesterday. How do you collect the publications, if any collection is done, in your country, in your organization, or in your, in your um, college? in your laboratory. And secondly, has this process changed? How recently has it changed? Have you been doing this for five years? Are you just considering it now? <laughs>